On day one, I spawned in as a baby fire ant. I looked around and discovered that my colony was under attack by the horrible exterminator. I'm too small and adorable to die! I ran frantically, looking for safety as my people were getting poisoned left and right around me. Suddenly, a poison blast was headed right at me. I thought I was done for, but the queen ant jumped in front of me and protected me from the hit. No, queen! <laughs> in a hundred days, your whole colony will be dead. Run, little one! I did as I was told and ran for my life. Unfortunately, the exterminator spotted me. You're not getting away. The oversized player chased after me. On day two, I was being chased by the exterminator. I didn't stand a chance against him and my little legs couldn't outrun someone his size. I have to hide. As a fire ant, I had the power to climb up walls. I used his ability to scale a nearby tree until I finally reached the top. Uh, where did that ant go? Uh, I'll have to eliminate them later. The exterminator left, leaving me alone in the tree. Whew, that was close. Shh, you're gonna blow my cover. What? Who said that? I looked around, but I could only see a leaf on the ground. Is that leaf talking? I'm a leaf bug. I'm trying to blend in. Oh, great. Now you've done it, doofus. Suddenly, a bird predator swooped overhead. I quickly ran in for cover, but the bird kept trying to get me with his powerful claws. Lay off! I used my fire ant pincers to bite the bird hard. I nibbled on him until the feathered freak got annoyed and flew away. You really saved my hide. I'm Stan. I'm Max. Let's get out of here before more birds come. On day three, I navigated the overworld with Stan. As a little fire ant, the world around us looked so different. A blade of grass was almost three times my size. This is amazing! We passed through a village where I spotted a piece of bread on the ground. Despite my small size, I was able to lift the bread and add it to my inventory. One large piece of bread was worth dozens to someone my size. This should last me a while. Suddenly, an unsuspecting villager walked by me, nearly stepping on us. Aww. Luckily, we managed to move out of the way. This place is dangerous for the likes of us. We better make shelter. Stan and I found a safe location and began to build an ant pile. I planned to make the biggest and mightiest ant pile to protect my people. Once I had a good start, I built Stan his own room. I made sure to add lots of leaves so he could camouflage easily. Not bad, kid. Thanks. Just then, one of my colony members ran up to me. I used the last of my energy to find you. Return to the kingdom. The queen needs you urgently. The soldier died right in front of me. The journey had been too hard on him. No, I have to get back to my colony, fast. On days four through seven, I returned to the colony to find the place in shambles after the exterminator's attack. All of the ants were acting strangely. They had fallen critically ill to the exterminator's poison. I need to get to the queen. I hurried into the throne room where I found the queen waiting for me. Your majesty, you look a bit different. I was covered in poison from the battle. I might look better now, but I'm still weak. What's going on? The exterminator has poisoned the entire colony. You're the only one here who's well enough to save us. How can I help? Seek out the six great monuments of food. The picnic, trash can, sandbox, apple tree, campgrounds, and the refrigerator alone. All the ingredients needed for the cure. But do so quickly. If you can't gather all the ingredients by day 100, our colony will perish. Suddenly, the ground around us began to tremble. I rushed outside and saw a couple players walking by. I wonder what all the excitement is about. I better follow them. On days 8 through 10, I followed the players until they arrived at a picnic. Waiting at the center of the blanket was the legendary cake. This must be the first of the six monuments. I began to explore the picnic in all of its glory. It was full of so many different foods and I took some for the road. Suddenly, one of the players spotted me. Ah, an ant! She began to try and swat me away. I didn't want to hurt her, but I bit her with my pincers to protect myself. Ah, it bit me! Uh -huh, itchy! Hey, you're ruining our picnic! The other player stood up and pulled out a sword. He was 20 times bigger than my size, so I had to watch out. I fought off the player with my pincers and used my small size to evade his wings. Hold still! The fight went on until I finally got a strong bite on him. Come on, let's get out of here! This place is infested! The players ran off, leaving me the entire spread of food. Ha ha ha! I'm the apex predator of the picnic! Think again, little ant. I turned around and found a massive mantis towering over me. I'll be taking this picnic for myself! Before I could react, the insect attacked me. 
The mantis swang his powerful arms at me like swords. I did my best to evade them and retaliate with my fire and pincers. My small size made me a hard target, but whenever the mantis landed a hit, he would deal loads of damage. I had to get in close to bite him, but unfortunately, it was nearly impossible to get in close without getting hit by the mantis's attacks. I was too small to win this battle. I need to come up with a plan, otherwise I'm finished. I looked at the legendary cake, which gave me an idea. I quickly scaled up the side of the cake and munched on some of it for strength. I feel weird. Suddenly, my body grew bigger and my pincers were sharper. I was now an adult fire ant with 10 hearts. The mantis continued his onslaught when I suddenly shot a fireball back at him. Whoa, as an adult fire ant, I have fire powers. I began to fire away at the mantis with my new flaming ability. It began to give me the edge I needed to turn the tide of the battle. Each hit I landed from the fireballs dealt loads of burn damage. How are you doing that? I'm a fire ant. Duh. With one final blow, the mantis was defeated. Time to claim my prize. I took the cake as my first ingredient to make the cure. One ingredient down, only five more to go. On days 15 through 18, I returned back to my base and looked for a spot to place my newly claimed cake. I planned to pile up all the ingredients from the legendary monuments here. Once I gather all six ingredients, my colony will be saved. Since the attack from the exterminator made my original colony compromised, I decided to begin preparations to move my colony here. I made new tunnels and rooms for all of my people to call their own. I also added a private room for the queen to watch over the colony. Just as I wrapped up my preparations, the queen arrived at my base with the entire colony. You all look exhausted. Take this. Thank you, Max. I know our colony is in good hands. Unfortunately, I forgot my crown. Would you be a deer and get it? Yes, ma'am. I trekked back to the old colony and found the queen's crown sitting on the ground. There we go. Time to head back. I climbed out and found the exterminator waiting for me. Where do you think you're going, little fire ant? This is bad news. Well, well, well. If it isn't the little ant that got away. <laughs> Evacuate all you want. Nothing will stop my poison from finishing your colony in a hundred days. Oh yeah? Take this. I started blasting him with fireballs, but it didn't do anything to him. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is that the best you've got? There was nothing I could do to stop him, and he started pouring water all over the ant bed. I was swept away in the flood and got lost in the current. Ah! I was totally disoriented, and eventually I passed out. On days 22 through 24, I woke up and looked around. Ugh, what happened? The water must have swept me up here. I turned around to find I was next to a giant trash can. I moved forward and decided to explore the inside. I landed inside and began searching around. As I was digging around, I suddenly spotted the legendary ingredient. Wait, this must be the monument the queen told me about. That's so lucky. Just then, a fly flew over to me. Oi, this is our turn. Butts all freak. But I need that thing. What are you going to do to stop me? Hey, boys, we got a visitor. Uh-oh. A huge swarm of flies came out of nowhere. The flies all ganged up on me at once. They bit at me and bullied me into the corner. I tried to use my fire to fend them off, but they kept coming. I climbed away as best I could, but the flies caught up to me with their wings and knocked me down. Leave me alone, you bullies! I tried using my fire again, but the trash can was so damp that nothing was working. Their strength in numbers was way too much. I took out as many as I could, but there was way too many of them. I thought I was finished for sure, when suddenly they all stopped attacking. Everybody run! Suddenly, all the flies flood the area, leaving me alone. What in the world? Did I scare them off? I turned around and a raccoon was right in front of me. Ah! The raccoon charged at me in a rage. He was much stronger than the flies, so I tried to evade him at all costs. I managed to crawl into the opening of the trash bag where the raccoon couldn't reach me. He's too strong. There's no way I'll beat him with brute force. I need a new plan. I realized that the trash bag was a perfect opportunity for a plan. I dug into the area around me and laid a perfect trap. Hey, you oversized rat, come and get me. The taunt angered the raccoon and he climbed straight into the bag, landing right on top of my trap. He fell deeper into the garbage and I was able to climb out. I pulled the strings of the bag with all my might, tying it up and sealing him in. 
Take that! With all the threats out of the way, I went back over to the food and claimed it for myself. Two ingredients down, four to go. After claiming my prize, I began to transform. I started to hover above the ground. Before I knew it, I grew some wings, gained five hearts, and gained the ability to fly. Whoa, I can fly now. One step closer to finding a cure. On days 29 through 32, I was heading home when I spotted a miniature man fighting a massive spider. Hey buddy, a little help? My growing gadget accidentally made this spider massive! Whoa! Hey Ant-Man! Say no more! Together, Ant-Man and I fought the giant kaiju spider. I took to the skies with my brand new wings and shot fireballs at the monstrous foe. With his big size, he was able to land powerful attacks with his fangs that dealt massive damage. I had to be careful not to get hit too much, otherwise I was toast. While I shot fireballs from afar, Ant-Man went in close with his fists and beat down the oversized bug. Even with my burn damage though, the spider continued its rampage. We were struggling to beat it, until it accidentally dropped Ant-Man's gadget on the ground. <gasps> gimme, gimme. I grabbed the device and quickly used it. Growing massive. I am the ultimate life form. I quickly squashed the spider and started to celebrate when suddenly I shrank back to normal size. Aw, oh, man. What happened? I guess the gadget is busted. Thanks for the help, though. You can keep it. With that, Ant-Man left me with his broken gadget. Huh, maybe I'll be able to fix this later. This power would definitely give me the edge I need. On days 33 through 35, I returned to the colony and started asking around about the gadget. Excuse me, do you think you could help me fix this gadget here? Well, yes, I can certainly take a look, but I'll need time to experiment. Thanks. While he messed around with it, I decided to get to work expanding the base. I started by adding a kitchen area where I can keep all the ingredients I collected as fresh as possible. Afterwards, I got to work on a farm for the base. It won't cure my colony, but they still need to get fed somehow. As I was digging out a new area, I spotted some diamond ore and made myself diamond boots. I went looking for the nerdy ant and found him outside next to the hill. I was about to ask him for an update when out of nowhere he was crushed by a giant foot. What? I looked up to see a giant snot-nosed kid who was messing with my base. <laughs> Look at all the ants squirm! He started smashing things up. By the time he was done, the anthill was a crater. They're not getting away with that! I ran after the big jerk as fast as I could. On days 36 through 39, I followed the kid to a sandbox. Aha! He led me right to the next monument! Just then, the giant kid ran by and nearly crushed me. This place is a war ground for someone my size! I better seek my way around or I'm finished! I was trying to navigate the sandbox carefully when I spotted the next ingredient in the distance. There it is! As I approached, a wasp suddenly flew out from behind a sand dune. Boo! Ah, a wasp! The kid started running around in a panic. I nearly got stomped on a few times, and I was forced to hide. The kid fled the sandbox, and it was finally clear, leaving only me and the wasp. What was that for? This is our sandbox, and we don't take kindly to intruders. Get him, boys! Suddenly, more wasps appeared and all attacked me. I was fighting the wasps, and even with my own wings, it was hard to fight them all on my own. I blasted away at them with my fireballs and tried to keep my distance, but the wasps were quick. They swarmed me with their nimble wings and stung at me with their stingers for massive damage. I tried to fend them off, but I was just one fire ant against an entire swarm. Eventually, I had taken too much damage and I was forced to retreat. Man, wasps are the worst! Tell me about it. Oh, hey, who are you? Name's Bert. Us bees get a bad rap because of wasps like them. I'd be willing to help you take them down. I've got some friends who can help too. You got yourself a deal. In a matter of minutes, Bert had gathered an army of bees and we charged in to take on the wasps together. Now, with the help of the angry little bees, I was actually at an advantage. I stuck to my usual tactics, shooting deadly fireballs as accurately as I could. The wasps were still tough, flying around with precision and hurting both me and my bee brethren. Still, we kept at it. My my friends chipped away at the wasps, hitting and stinging them whenever they found an opening. This time, we were actually winning. After a lot of fighting, thanks to our new numbers, we were eventually able to take them all out. Woohoo! Thanks, bees! I claimed the next ingredient at the sandbox and regrouped with the bees. Hey, you guys are pretty good fighters. Want to join my cause and come live at my base? Sure. On days 45 through 48, I returned home to my destroyed base and fixed all the damage they had caused. It took a while, but with my fire and strength, I could lift anything. Looking good as new. Next, I added my new ingredient to the kitchen and got to work building a hive for the bees. I wanted them to feel at home, so I made sure the hive really felt like their natural habitat. 
Finally, I decorated the place with some blocks I collected from Toys in the Sandbox. I wanted to add a little color and make those big kids jealous of my cool house. Things are looking even better than before the kids attacked. Once I was finished, the queen approached. Thank you for all of your service to the colony. I'm not gonna stop until I go to all six monuments. Suddenly, the ground started shaking beneath us. I went to check it out and spotted the exterminator nearby. That can't be good. I stuck over and watched him from afar. I noticed he was reading some sort of map. I wonder what info is on that. I gotta get my hands on it. He put the map away and kept moving, so I followed behind him as close as I could. On days 49 through 52, I was on the lookout for the exterminator's whereabouts. The day was coming to an end, and I watched as he set up camp for the night. Ugh, time to get some sleep. Just then, a fly buzzed by the exterminator. Ah, quit that buzzing! He smacked down the fly in a single hit, killing him instantly. That guy is ruthless! What a monster! I was now more determined than before to steal that map. I waited patiently for the exterminator to fall asleep, then made my move. That map is gonna be mine! I began my infiltration and got in close on the exterminator. I crawled into his pocket to try and claim the map for my own. However, to my surprise, I discovered a whole new world inside. What the? What is this place? I walked around and discovered a sign that read Pants World. It was like I was in a new dimension. I wonder what's in here. I explored the wonders of the exterminator's pocket. I visited the world's largest ball of lint. I walked up to get a closer look at it, but a voice startled me. Hey, this is my lint ball. Hands off. The voice came from a beetle, who quickly crawled out from behind the massive wad of lint. Whoa, who are you? I'm a lint beetle. What's it look like? Do you know where I can find a map the exterminator had? I just told you, I'm a lint beetle. No. Not a map beetle. I don't care about maps. Now scram, you ain't getting any of my hard earned furs. This place is whack. Next, I discovered the cell phone monument. I was about to fly over to it, but it started to ring. Hello? Hello? Son, is that you? Um, maybe? You haven't called your mother in three months! Always too busy with your bugs crushing job to check in on me! Huh? Her voice was so loud, it was gonna wake the exterminator. I quickly hung up, and thankfully, it seemed like the exterminator was still asleep. Phew, sorry lady, I'll remind him to give you a call later. After that, I found the exterminator's massive leather wallet. Sweet, this might have something that I need. I went to take a peek inside until a moth flew out. Hey, this is our territory. I'm just trying to find the exterminator's map. Would you know where that is? Oh, that tasty looking paper? Some other bugs carried it off in that direction. Finally, someone helpful. Thanks, I'll look there. On days 53 through 55, I traveled in the direction the moths pointed me in and stumbled upon a stadium where a tournament was being held. I quickly noticed the contestants were fighting to the death. This is all in some dude's pants? Just then, I spotted the exterminator's map sitting on a pedestal. It was the grand prize of the tournament. I have to enter. I made my way into the rink and waited for my first opponent. The horrible, terrifying chicken in pants. Everything is big for a little guy like me. The chicken charged at me, and I braced myself for battle. To a normal mob, a chicken wouldn't be scary at all. But for a little fire ant like me, each peck from its powerful beak dealt massive damage. It went at me with everything it had and tried to chip me down hit by hit. I smacked it with my iron pickaxe. It was the only weapon I had as well as my ant pincers. Whenever I got some distance, I shot fireballs from afar to get some burn damage. The battle was tough, but I managed to take down my first opponent. Who's next? My final opponent stepped up before me and I was face to face with a cow. In pants. Uh, that's not how cows are supposed to wear pants. You regret saying that? The cow ran at me with the intent to finish this. The cow hit me down with his powerful horns and I did my best to evade in the sky. He was a tough opponent. It was almost as if my attacks did nothing. I kept going at him with everything I had. I needed that map to save my people, but it was hopeless. I was beginning to lose the battle when suddenly I felt a feeling deep inside of me. I can't lose, not here. The strange power grew inside me, giving me a new fire ax to wield in my hands. Using my new powers, I slashed the cow with my fire ax. Each hit from the powerful weapon dealt massive damage and I was beginning to chip through the cow's pants armor. We went toe to toe, fighting with everything we had at each other. Hit by hit, I was beginning to overpower my foe. I managed to defeat the fashionable cow, winning the entire tournament. I'm the top ant. 
I got my map prize and realized it was titled Campsite. Wait a sec, this leads to the next monument. Score! I quickly rushed out of the exterminator's pocket so he wouldn't notice me. Unfortunately, when I thought I was scot-free, he woke up. Ugh! It's in my pants! The exterminator began to spray at me with his poison. I used my wings to evade his attacks and took to the sky. A single hit from that stuff would leave me in the same state as my sick colony. This guy is dangerous. I need to find these monuments and fast. On days 56 through 58, I followed the map to the next monument. Once I got closer, I realized I had finally arrived at the camping grounds. This must be the campsite. I've got to investigate to see if I can find some food for my colony. After a little bit of searching around the campsite, I managed to find a giant glorious burger just sitting on the ground. That must be the legendary food item. Time to claim my prize. As I approached the burger, suddenly a giant beetle came out of nowhere to stop me. Send aside, small one. Oh, I saw this burger first, so I'm going to eat it all by myself. But I need to save my colony. I don't care, Pipsqueak. Finders keepers. Surely there's enough of that food to share with me, right? No way. I'm hungry, so you can either skedaddle or watch me eat this entire thing. Your choice, bub. No way. I'll fight you for it. <laughs> Please, you wouldn't stand a chance. Ants are just tiny wastes of space anyway. Get out of here, man. <gasps> Nobody talks about my ant family like that. Oh, yeah? What's a little guy like you going to do about it? This! Ah! I charged in headfirst to fight the giant beetle to claim the burger for the ant colony. The giant beetle had the power to deal punches that sent me flying back. I had to be careful not to get hit too many times, otherwise I would be done for. I evaded his attacks in the sky and rained fireballs from above. Whenever I had the chance to get in close, I smashed into the beetle with my fire axe. The insect had powerful armor that was able to withstand my attacks. Luckily, my fire powers dealt burn damage that gradually weakened him. I kept up my attacks, not giving the bug a moment to rest. Eventually, I was beginning to get the one up on them. After an extremely tough fight, I managed to come out on top. For the colony! I then began moving towards the burger to claim my prize, but as I got closer, I noticed it was starting to move. Hey, there better not be anyone behind there. I won this burger fair and square. The burger began to move more and more, making me think there was something wrong with it. Uh, is this thing alive? Suddenly, the giant burger turned all the way around to face me. Hungry? Huh? Oh, uh, yes. My ant colony needs food. Do you have some to spare? Me hungry. Me eat ant. Eat ant? What do you mean? Uh, me eat ant. Me hungry. They can eat. Ah, no. The mutated burger lunged at me with the intent to kill. The beast was incredibly powerful and would eat everything that stood in his path. I used my fire axe to make the burger extra crispy, hoping to slow it down. The sentient food kept running towards me, wanting to eat me whole. The more he attacked, the harder it became to continue the fight. I couldn't leave this battle defeated. I needed this ingredient to feed my colony. How is this even possible? I was beginning to lose the battle. The burger monster was just too strong. I have to change my approach. I looked around and spotted the campfire in the middle of the site. The sight of its flames gave me an idea. I ran in front of the campfire and braced myself. Hey, meathead, come and get me. Burger, eat. The monster ran at me and into the flames, burning him to a crisp. I did it. I realized that at the base of the campfire, the burger had dropped a food item. I looked closer and discovered that it was the legendary burger I had been seeking. No mind if I do. Suddenly, I felt my body begin to change. I grew even bigger, and my wings became more powerful. I gained five more hearts and a flame breath ability. Two more ingredients to go. On days 62 through 65, I returned back to the ant pile and placed my new ingredient inside of the fridge. Time for the fun part. I began to expand my base even bigger and higher than before. I wanted all predators to know that we were a mighty colony and that anyone who messed with us would be taken down. Next, I added a small infirmary for the sickest of my residents to rest in. I made sure there were plenty of beds and supplies for my people. Lastly, I added a lookout tree for me to relax in. With my new form, I wanted a place I could really spread my wings. With that, my expansion was completed. Not too bad. Just as I descended from my new tree, the queen rushed towards me. 
Max, come quickly! It's an emergency! I followed her inside of the colony to find that the ants resting in the infirmary were critically ill. We've tried everything, but the poison is overtaking them! <coughs> Please, save our people. The sick ant died right before my very eyes! No! Things are getting worse. I need to hurry! I walked out of the infirmary and flew into the sky. There, I spotted the exterminator in the distance. What does he want? I tailed behind him to find that he was poisoning another nearby colony of insects. He blasted all the bugs with his poison until nothing remained in the wreckage. My work here is done. <laughs> the exterminator left, and I looked over the aftermath of his attack. The colony was in complete ruin. Not a single bug survived. He's a monster! I need to stop him! On days 66 through 68, I took to the skies and began to scout out any leads to the next monument. As I searched, I spotted a little endermite stranded in the middle of a swamp. Oh no! They need help! I quickly flew in and tried to save them, but the endermite tried to swap me away. Ah, an ant! Ow! Hey! I'm trying to help! Suddenly, a massive toad sentinel hopped up on a lily pad. One wrong move and we were as good as dead. Don't make any sudden movements. Ah, a toad, we're gonna die! The Endermite's outburst caused the warped toad to spot them and swallow up the mite in one gulp. Spit them out! The toad sentinel immediately began to fight me, using intense jumping powers to damage me. I tried to avoid it the best I could, but he was incredibly fast. Still though, I kept at it, using my fire axe to dwindle his health down bit by bit. The axe was not always the most effective, especially since the toad would whip me with its tail if I got too close. That's why I also utilized my fire breath, creating distance while still lowering the monstrous frog's health. After a fierce battle, I took out the toad sentinel, leaving only the endermite in his place. Ew, toad guts are gross. Are you okay? Thanks to you, I am. Sorry for acting like I did. And scare me. I built a little endermite a boat so he can make it back to shore. In exchange, he tossed over a map to the next monument. This is just what I needed! Thanks! On days 69 through 73, I followed the map and arrived at the location of the apple orchard. I was shocked when I saw that the one beautiful orchard was now full of rotting trees. What happened to the monument? I scavenged the area for any surviving apples. To my surprise, I managed to find one alone on the ground. It's not legendary, but finders keepers. I went to pick it up when suddenly a worm crawled out of it. Hey, hands off! These trees belong to the worms! The apples are for everyone! What's with all these small mobs being so selfish? When you're as small as us, you gotta look out for yourselves! Everything around you is a threat! We should all work together though! That's what us ants do! I'm staying here until I get what I came for! Don't say I didn't warn you! Out of nowhere, tons of worms armed with guns all peeked out of hiding. I was surrounded! Fire! They all unloaded their bullets onto me, dealing tons of damage. I took to the skies and tried to evade the heavy fire. I need to find cover! Quick! On days 74 through 78, I was being attacked by the worm army. I tried to regain my footing and retaliated against their forces. Although I could already tell my power was greater than theirs, they were an army. They shot a barrage of bullets and explosives in my direction, causing me to take damage and become disoriented. I attempted to fly out of the way of the gunfire, but there was just too much of it. I had no choice but to buckle down and use my abilities, hurling fire at the army of worms. That's when I realized there was a way I could outsmart them. I shot my fire powers all across the lifeless orchard. The tree stumps all set ablaze and quickly spread into a forest fire. Retreat! With the worms distracted, I quickly found a cave and took cover. I just had to find that legendary ingredient so I can get out of here. I looked around and realized that standing before me was a lone emerald apple tree. Okay, that's definitely what I need for the cure. Just then, a big bad worm boss crawled out of nowhere. Hands off my emerald apples. This is the only good tree left in this orchard. That's because you guys destroyed the rest of them! Psh, that doesn't matter. I'll take you down right here, right now. I'd like to see you try! The boss charged in at me and I prepared to fight. The worm had a powerful tongue that he shot out of his mouth at me. I did my best to evade him with my wings and retaliated with my fire attacks. As I had hoped, the worm was set ablaze, but he continued to fight through the flames. He snapped at me and even leapt into the air to try and deal more damage. He was one of the toughest opponents I had faced so far. I calculated my attacks carefully and continued to attack him with each opening I could find. 
After a long battle, my flames became too much for him. I took out the worm's leader. Time to take that apple. I plucked the emerald apple off of the tree and suddenly felt my body change. I gained five more hearts and a death worm gauntlet. I'm ready to face whatever lies ahead. On days 79 through 82, I returned to my home and added the emerald apple to my collection. I'm only one ingredient away from the cure. I better start making the last of my preparations. I started by mining for more ore and managed to hit diamond. I used it to craft some new armor to protect myself. Next, I expanded the base even further. I added tiny homes for future residents that wanted to have a safe place to call their own. Here, the exterminator wouldn't be able to hurt them. Next, I spruced up the inside of the anthill to make it more appealing. Lastly, I expanded the fridge to make it bigger and frostier to keep items even fresher than before. Just as I thought I was finished, I flew to the surface and saw a giant shoe laying on the ground. I guess a player left this here. Time to make good use out of it. I repurposed the shoe into a treasure room and added it as a new part of the base. With that, my expansion was complete. Not too shabby. Out of the corner of my eye, I spotted something on the ground and went to check it out. I realized it was the growing gadget I had gotten from Ant-Man a long time ago. I thought this was destroyed. Huh, I should really figure out how to fix this. If I do, I could grow into a giant ant again. Next to the remote was a note, and I picked it up. Find a new energy core and the device will work as intended. Then it looks like I'm gonna have to find a new core. On days 83 through 85, I went out into the overworld in search of a core for the Ant-Man device. As I searched, I found a miniature player jumping around for attention. I quickly swooped in to see what was wrong. How did you end up like that? I touched a weird rock in the woods. Come with me. I followed the player and they took me to a glowing artifact in the woods. I could feel its radiating power, but its light had attracted the attention of a ton of mosquitoes. That must be the core I need to fix the shrinking gadget. Just then, one of the mosquitoes spotted us. Hey, that's the player who touched our rock. Get him. Take cover, quick. The player ran off to find a place to hide. All of the mosquitoes swarmed around me and I prepared for battle. The insects all tried to latch onto me and suck my blood. They then used the blood they sucked to send a projectile back at me. I needed them off of me quickly, so I used my fire breath to blast them away. I began to level down the swarm with my fire and one by one, mosquitoes fell to my strength. Even though they had me in numbers, they were no match for the power of a fire ant. Thanks to all my strength, I overcame the mosquito swarm. I'm the strongest fire ant to ever live. With the mosquitoes taken care of, I claimed the core for myself and the device was fixed. Time to test this out. The player walked out of hiding and I zapped him with the Ant-Man device. He grew back to normal size. Whoa, that really worked. Thanks, uh, how about you come over to my house and I'll give you a reward. Sounds great. On days 86 through 88, I arrived at the player's house to find that he had a fridge. That's the last monument. I quickly made my way to the door, but the player stopped me. What are you doing? Oh, I want to get inside of the fridge. I know you helped me and all, but I can't have an ant infestation in my fridge. But I really need it. No can do, bud. The player started to walk away and I got desperate. I took out the Ant-Man device and shrunk him back down to a small size. Hey, turn me back to normal. No can do, bud. I need to get into that fridge. I flew up towards the door, but the player started to attack me with arrows. Turn me back! The two of us fought for a while. I went easy on him since I really didn't want to hurt him, but I was determined to get inside of the fridge. I avoided using my fire attacks and went in with my iron pickaxe instead. The little player jumped at me with his diamond sword and tried to slash me down. He even managed to corner me at one point and deal some good damage. Luckily, I had my wings, so I was able to fly out and continue attacking back. I flew out of his reach and dwindled down his health bit by bit until he grew weaker. I finally managed to stun him and took the chance to escape inside of the next monument. On days 89 through 90, I was finally inside of the fridge. Snow was on the ground like I was in a winter wonderland. Whoa, time to look for that last ingredient. I checked out all the sites and the different food items spread around. Unfortunately, I couldn't see anything that looked legendary. Just then, I spotted a village of spiders. Maybe they know the way. I flew down and spoke to one of the residents. What brings you to our humble village? I'm seeking the legendary ingredient this monument holds. Do you know where it is? The legendary ice cream resides in the freezer, but going there is a death sentence. I have to try. My colony's in trouble. Very well, traveler. But be warned, the cold is so intense that it freezes everything that enters. And even if you manage to reach the ice cream, it is guarded by the most vicious of beasts. I'm a mighty warrior. My fire powers will keep me warm. For your sake, I hope they do. The spider pointed me in the right direction and I continued on my way. 
After some traveling, I arrived at the freezer. The place was full of frozen bugs and signs telling me to turn back. <sighs> All right, Max, time to save your colony. On days 91 through 93, I navigated through the harsh cold of the freezer. I got so cold that the surrounding air gave me poison. My health began to gradually drop. Time to heat things up. I tried to use my fire powers to keep warm, but it was too cold. I couldn't get them to work. I need to find shelter, fast. The poison chipped away at my heart until I finally found an ice cave to take cover. Once I was inside, the poison effect went away. Ooh, that was close. I looked around and noticed a light coming from inside of the cave. I decided to follow it and see what it was. When I reached the source of the light, I discovered a cavern which housed the legendary ice cream. I did it! Suddenly, a horrible warped Moscow emerged. This ice cream is mine! I'll destroy anyone who tries to have it! Haven't you learned to share? <laughs> the monster lunged at me and we clashed for the final ingredient. The massive Moscow was able to lunge at me with his wings for speed and hit me down with his powerful fists. Not only did the cold of the freezer weaken my powers, but the ice cream protector was my toughest foe yet. I tried to get in close to my fire axe, but the Moscow would grab me and drink my blood. Whenever he did, he gained a new blue projectile attack. I changed my approach and started to chip him down with my fire attacks as well as my deathworm gauntlet. The battle seemed to be in his favor, but I was so close to the final ingredient. I had to win for my colony. It was tough, but I managed to overpower the ice cream's guardian. Woohoo! Upon its death, it dropped an antidote charm, which would protect me from poisonous attacks. This is perfect for dealing with the exterminator. I flew up and officially claimed the ice cream for myself. I suddenly gained five hearts. Time to make the cure. On days 94 through 95, I headed back to my colony and added the final ingredient to my fridge. I finally have everything I need for the cure. As I admired my efforts, the queen ant approached me. Congratulations, Max. I'll get to work on this. She took each ingredient off its pedestal and began to mix up the cure. In a few moments, it was finally completed. I'll gather all of our people together and we'll use this to cure everyone. Just then, the ground began to tremble. The queen and I rushed outside and discovered that the exterminator had found our colony. If it isn't the little ant that got the way, I see you're rebuilding. Your efforts have been wasted. We finally made a cure to your nasty poison and my people will be saved. Are you sure about that? The exterminator sprayed poison down onto us and hit the queen. She was already weak, and it was too much for her. She died instantly and dropped the cure, which the exterminator picked up for himself. No! Good luck saving your people now. Day 100 is just around the corner. The exterminator left the colony, leaving nothing but a map in his wake. What's this? I picked it up and realized he had accidentally dropped the map to his base. That's it! He's gonna pay! On days 96 through 98, I began the final expansion to my base. I started by honoring our fallen queen with a memorial. I made sure it was surrounded by everything the queen loved and admired. I'm saving this colony for you, your highness. Next, I built a poppy-shaped watchtower so all the colony would enjoy the view. Additionally, I made a picnic so that when I returned with the cure, we could enjoy food and celebration. Finally, I set up a tent for any other outdoor insects that are seeking refuge. After a lot of work, my ant base was finally completed. Time to prepare for my final quest. I found some more diamond and used it to make some more armor. Afterwards, I gathered more food to take on my quest. As I was finishing up, one of the ants in my colony approached me. With the queen dead, what are we supposed to do? Huh, come with me. I called for a meeting and spoke to all of my fellow ants. <sighs> I know there are rising concerns since the queen's death. I assure all of you that I will stop at nothing to get the cure for our people and ensure that the exterminator faces punishment for the horrible crimes he's committed. You're the one who's been protecting us all this time. All hail the new queen! Uh, king I think is more fitting. All, all hail Queen Max! Close enough. As your new queen, I won't let you down. With that, I set off to find the exterminator and reclaim the cure. On day 99, I arrived at the exterminator's base to find that it was a lone house in the middle of a wasteland. He's destroying everything with his poison! This ends now! I began to head towards the house when suddenly a massive anteater guard stopped me in my tracks. Man, this guy really hates ants! The massive anteater charged at me and began to attack with his powerful mouth. We were natural enemies and each attack the oversized animal landed dealt loads of damage. I tried to get in close with my fire axe, but he was able to hit me with his tongue. 
I could tell that the anteater was hungry and was going to stop at nothing to get me. Unfortunately for him, losing was not an option. I retaliated with my fireballs and fire breath to keep him at bay. He continued to fight through the flames, but I kept up my attacks. I was going to win this to avenge the queen and save my colony. After a fierce battle, I managed to take out the exterminator's guard. Come out and face me, coward! Like clockwork, the exterminator emerged from the door. I'm not afraid of a little ant like you. Let's dance! On day 100, I was face to face with the exterminator. I had to end this now, otherwise my colony was done for. Hand over the cure and I'll let you live. That's funny. You should be the one scared of me. I have the poison that could kill you in an instant. I'm stronger than any bug you faced so far. You've messed with the wrong fire ant. I took the skies and flew around the exterminator, landing hit after hit up close. They were easily my most difficult opponent yet, taking in all of my hits almost as if they were nothing. That wasn't going to slow me down, though. I continued to use my fire axe, setting him ablaze. Occasionally, I would pull out my deathworm gauntlet, using its sharp teeth to lower his health down more. I also made sure to use my antidote charm to ensure his poison effects didn't overpower me. I had to deliver the final blow, so I took out the ant-man device and I zapped myself growing into a giant ant. Who's hiding now? With my newfound strength, I struck the exterminator down once and for all. Upon his death, he dropped the cure, which I claimed for my colony. Everyone is saved! Woohoo!